I want to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai, by Hashem Rakak Radash. Double honor to the apostles and elders of great millstone who rule well. Peace and salutations to the elect, and much respect to the brothers pushing his word to four winds of the earth. Shalom to you, few sisters out there as well. This is Brother Abiyah coming at you with another lesson here. And um, I first got this, uh, seeing this article uh, from the brothers uh, GMS Solemn Assembly. Um, and the brother, um, I believe, is uh, pages uh, GMS Fruits and Herbs, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and uh, I'm gonna go into it, man. Uh, bring some scriptures out, and Lord willing, this lesson is edifying. Okay, and it says, uh, What's wrong with eating people? Is the world ready for synthesized cannibalism? You could soon be dining on lightly seasoned chunks of your own loved ones. And it says the MSN is currently uh, pushing cannibalism, but human cannibalism has been known to transmit debilitating diseases. So now they are addressing their propaganda with lab meat. And its latest edition, Wired UK, discusses about what if we would start eating lab-grown human meat? <laughs> yes, that is definitely madness. And it says, what if you could tuck into a juicy human burger that was guaranteed cruelty free uh, no one has to lose a shoulder for your sunday roast no one gets their legs sawn off for your signature slow cook uh, tagging no one <laughs> even has to die these days in the not too distant future we could all be tucking into a lab grown meaty cubes of our favorite celebrities or eating a synthesized slab of newlywebs or newlyweds to mark the special day. In the West, this is a huge taboo, says Dr. Bill Shute, uh, professor of biology research association and residence at the American Museum of blah, 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 who gives a damn. Okay, and it says in, uh, let me see here, man. It says in 2017, sows and Tinctures made from people have fallen out of fashion with pharmacists, but what about the restaurant up the road? In 2013, scientists from the Netherlands proved that we can make animal meat in a lab from cell cultures into beef burgers. The first, which cost uh, 215000 to make, was uh, apparently not that juicy. <laughs> but there's a difference between eating a cow and eating cow. The latter is a massive win for cows. Okay, I'm not going to go into this whole shit, man. It's just stupid. But you get the whole point, man. Um, Hold on. <laughs> it says, <laughs> this in the vitro meat cookbook is really a cookbook in the name only. It is an art project, a conversation started as a recipe for knitted meat, a festive centerpiece to replace the Christmas turkey, four stars, <laughs> And doodoo nuggets. <laughs> hey yo, man. Uh, Alright, I'm getting out of there, man. But you see it here. It says what's wrong with eating people. You know, this is uh something that Esau is trying to push. He's trying to, you know, make it uh just a regular thing, man, at the end of the day. You know, because Esau, you know, himself, you know, those Edomites are bloodthirsty uh beasts, man. They're cannibals themselves, man. Okay, a lot of these missing children out here, they're not only using them for adrenochrome, they're eating them as well, man. Amongst other things, you know, before they uh, ultimately put them children to death, man, and sacrifice them. Okay, I believe in, in the book, um, what is it, uh, The Delectable Negro, you know, after they uh, killed um, uh, Marcus Garvey. They ate them, man, you know, and they've been known to eat, you know, slaves on plantations. And, you know, Esau is just wicked, a, a wicked, uh, bloodthirsty uh, vampire, man. OK, and this is part of him wanting to be, you know, God on the earth because he wants everyone to follow his lead. He wants everyone to be like him. He wants everybody to do as he does, man. OK, and this is a <laughs> he's this is something that he's going to fail at, you know. For the most part, because he's not a trendsetter, man, at the end of the day, you know, but this is a trend that he's trying to sell to the masses, man. OK, 
This is part of his gradualism, man. Okay, this is how Esau moves. By putting out uh, BS like this to get people to be accepting to the fact that maybe one day they may have to eat uh, synthesized human meat, man. This is straight up disgusting. Okay, and the scriptures speak of, you know, famine, and it speaks of uh, from the famine, uh, people uh, be so hungry, you know, they end up eating their loved ones, man. All right, I'm just going to go into that in the scriptures, and Lord willing, this lesson is edifying. So we're going to get, uh, I'm going to start with Lamentations. Uh, Lamentations uh, chapter 4 and 4 through 11. And it says, And the tongue of the suckling child cleaveth to the root of, roof of his mouth for, for thirst. The young children ask bread, and no man breaketh it unto them. They did eat, I mean, they did feed delicately. Salakia. It says, They that did feed delicately are desolate in the streets. They that were brought up in scarlet embraced dunghills. For the punishment of the iniquity of the daughter of my people is greater than the punishment of the sin of Sodom. That was overthrown as in a moment and no hand stayed on her. Her Nazarites were purer than snow. They were whiter than milk. They were more ruddy in body than rubies. Their polishing was of sapphire. Their visage is blacker than a coal. They are not known in the streets. Their skin cleaveth to their bones it is with it has become like a stick okay because a lot of these people you know a lot of our people you know during this uh and it's talking about the babylonian uh empire right here man okay when they took over jerusalem man back in uh 587 587 bc you know led by uh nebuchadnezzar ii man okay and this is uh, a part of our history right here man you know and uh, this is what this is talking about, man. You remember uh, seeing, you know, back in the 80s when Esau would show them uh, them Hamites over there, skinny as hell from not eating because of a famine. You know, this is the same thing right here, man. Their visage is blacker than a coal. They are not known in the streets. Their skin cleaveth to their bones. It is withered. It has become like a stick. They that be slain of the sword are better than they that be slain with hunger. For these pine away, stricken through for want of the fruits of the field. The hands of the pitiful woman have sodden their own children. Right? And when you go into that word sodden, it means to boil, man. You know, so women were, were, were boiling their own children in that time, man. Okay? Just to eat, just to stay alive. They were their meat in the destruction of the daughter of my people. The Lord have accomplished his fury. He hath poured out his fierce anger and have kindled a fire in Zion and have devoured the, uh, devoured the foundations thereof. Okay. And we all know this is ordained by the heavenly father, man. Okay. Because throughout the Bible, you know, Israelites are pretty much going off serving other gods, man, and doing all types of iniquity, man. Okay. And this is just a, a, one of many punishments that the heavenly father, you know, put on us, man throughout history man okay and this is coming back on the earth okay a lot of people are going to come to face the fact that they have nothing to eat okay and a lot of people are going to go into panic mode right and they're going to end up either um chopping off their own damn arm or something to eat or killing they, their young ones man to have something to eat man okay or their loved ones man could be the grandmother you know, they, they own husband or wife, right? Grandfather, you know, aunt, uncle, what have you, man. Best friend. You know, people change when, when they're not eating, man. You know, people become very animalistic, man. All right? And I'm pretty sure some brothers, you know, have gone through it where they had nothing to eat. I know I damn sure did. You know, I was uh, <laughs> homeless, man. You know, for a minute, man. Maybe a period of a year. Okay, with nowhere to sleep, no, nowhere to, you know, nothing to eat, none of that, man. You know, the Heavenly Father put me through that at a young age, man. I believe I was like 21 years old, you know, because after I uh, left New York and came over here to Patterson, you know, I left right after the towers went down. You know, my father's like, yo, come move over here. And then, 
you know, I live with my father and his new girlfriend and, you know, it just wasn't working out, man. You know what I'm saying? So my father kicked me out, you know, and I didn't know no one out here, nothing, man. You know, and I was going, I wasn't eating at all. I was happy to see a quarter, <laughs> you know, I went through it, man. And it, it was many days. I did, the longest period I didn't eat was like for like two weeks, man, two, three weeks almost. Well, I ain't eat, man. You know, always had access to water or something like that. But as far as a, a good meal, no, not at all, man. And it's not a good feeling at all, man. Okay. But a lot of people, most, everyone is going to feel that, man. Soon come, you know, everyone's going to feel that, that, uh, that hunger, man, in the pit of your belly, man. You know, you can't let it control you though, man. You got to be strong with it, man. That's something I can, I can honestly say I went through and it's not fun at all, man. It's definitely not fun. Okay. And this is going into the Babylonian, uh, Babylonian captivity as well. Okay. And this is just a tactic that they use, man. They use it. Uh, the Romans use it as well, man. We're going to get into that too. It says, this is 2 Kings 25, 1 through 3. And it came to pass in the ninth year of his reign, in the tenth month, in the tenth day of the month that Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, came, he and all his hosts against Jerusalem and pitched against it. And they built forts against it round about. And the city was besieged until the eleventh year of King Zedekiah. And on the ninth day in the fourth month, the famine prevailed in the city. And there was no bread for the people of the land. Okay, and this is just a tactic that Esau likes to use to cut off, you know, the commerce and things coming in and out of the city. So the people ultimately uh, die of starvation, man. This is a cruel and, and wicked tactic that Esau uses. But ultimately, the Heavenly Father put it on Esau's uh, uh, mind or heart to do so, man. Okay, we give Esau no credit, right? And uh, this is coming. This is coming back, man. Okay? Soon there's not going to be any food in this land, man. You know, everyone's going to be panicking and running around. All hell's going to be breaking loose, man. People lose their mind, you know, when they ain't got no food, man. If they're not grounded, you know, if there's no balance to them, you know, people don't know how to, you know, people go out of their wits, man. They don't know how to function, you know? And that's soon coming to the earth, man. You know, and that's what that article made me uh, think about, man, because, you know, people will will do things like, uh, you know, eat other people and all that when they have nothing, man. OK. And what does that show? A lack of faith, man. A lack of faith in the Heavenly Father that the Heavenly Father will provide, man. OK. But in that day, you know, the land is going to be barren of faith, man. Uh, pursuing to uh, uh, second entrance, the fifth chapter and the first verse, man. OK. And that day, the land is going to be barren of faith, man. All right. So if the land is barren of faith and no one's really uh, counting or, or believing in the Heavenly Father, they're going to go, you know, you know, they, they're going to, uh, you know, go about and use their own devices to, uh, you know, to survive, man. OK, eating other people and, you know, eating all types of shit, man, that they're not supposed to be eating, man. But we, you know, we 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 going to be grounded, man. OK, we're going to wait on the Heavenly Father to feed us and take care of us, man. OK, because he promised he would do so, man. And we believe that he will, you know. And let me go to. Uh... Yeah, because this goes into the, you know, the other the Roman capti uh, captivity here, man. It's Romans 25 and. Um... Let's start at 52 here, man. OK, and it says, and he shall besiege thee in all thy gates unto thy high and fenced walls come down wherein thou trustest. Uh, throughout all thy land, and he shall besiege thee in all thy gates throughout all thy land, which the Lord thy power hath given thee, and thou shalt eat the fruit of thine own body, the flesh of thy sons and of thy daughters, which the Lord Yahweh thy power hath given thee in the siege, and in the straightness wherewith thine enemies shall distress thee. And this is talking about the Roman captivity right here, man. This is when the, um, the Flavian dynasty, you know, did this to our people, man. All right? It was mostly Titus, though, but I believe uh, Vaspasian, the father, um, he ruled from uh, 69, no, 66 A.D. to, uh, no, 69, yeah, 69 A.D. to around 79 A.D., okay? And his son uh, Domitian, I mean Titus, uh, ruled uh, two years, I believe, 79 to 81, 
and then um Domitian from 81 to 96, I believe. Um, but uh Titus was the one that that uh you know basically uh put this all together here, man. Titus and his and his father, you know. But his father was uh dying, you know, dying of severe uh diarrhea. That's how he died. The father being Vaspasian, okay? But this is the uh the Flavian dynasty here, man. Did this to our people. Used the same tactic, surrounding the, the walls of Jerusalem and not allowing any food or anything to come in or out, man. Okay? And this is what the people ultimately had to do to survive, man. And it, once again, man, this is a wicked ass tactic, but it's all it's all done by the by the Heavenly Father. Okay, as far as these our people, you know, eating the flesh of their sons and of their daughters, man. Okay. Let's go to uh let's go to Luke. Luke 21, I'm going to read 20 through 4, and it says, And when ye shall see Jerusalem compassed with armies, then know that the desolation thereof is nigh. Then let them which are in Judea flee to the mountains, and let them which are in the midst of it depart out, and let not them that are in the countries enter in, uh, therein too. For these be the days of vengeance, that all things which are written may be fulfilled, it says, but woe unto them that are with child and to them that give suck in those days, for there shall be great distress in the land and wrath upon his people. Right. And it says, but woe unto them that are with child, man. OK, because, you know, if you're fleeing into the wilderness, you know, you can't tell a child to be quiet. You know, a child is going to give up, you know, your, your exact location, man. OK. And. Also going into woe to them because they might have to eat their own child, man. You know, those were some harsh times then, man. You know, the Heavenly Father, you know, put uh, put them in uh, in dire straits. Okay, then, you know what I'm saying? That that that's a, a tough uh, a tough thing to have to deal with, man. Okay, knowing the fact that you know you 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 killed your own child and then you ate it, man, to survive, man. Imagine what that does to the psyche, you know, uh, sitting back and thinking about that, man. You know, looking at the bones of your child right next to you, man. Okay? Not to be funny, but you know them bones was naked, man. You know, you got to be super hungry to, to do something like that, man. You know? And these times are coming back on the earth, man. You know? You know, us brothers, we go into this a lot about the famine coming, you know, and we look around at these people out here and they're not even thinking about these things, man. You know, all of these things that we speak of are going to be catching these people off guard, man. You know, they're not going to be rooted and grounded. They're not going to be ready to deal with the things that are coming on the earth, man. Because they refuse to listen, man. Okay? And what's going to happen, man? They're going to be swept away with it, man. Okay? All these, all these, uh, all these, uh, these, these destructions that are coming are going to sweep them away, man, because they're not watching. They're not being circumspect, okay? They're not paying attention to the things that are happening in the earth, nor do they feel that they are going. those things that are happening in the earth are going to affect them. But ultimately, it's definitely going to affect them, man, okay? And the Heavenly Father is definitely going to bring famine to this place, man, and a lot of people are going to be eating human meat, man. A lot of people are going to be eating human meat, man. Okay? Let's go to uh, 2 Kings. Uh, let me see here. 20, 20 through 29. And it says, And it came to pass when they were came into Samaria that Elisha said, Yahweh opened the eyes of these men that they may see, and the Lord opened their eyes, and they saw, and behold, they were in the midst of Samaria. And the king of Israel said unto Elisha, When he saw them, My father, shall I smite them? Shall I smite them? And he answered, Thou shalt not smite them. What is thou smite those whom thou hast taken captive with the sword and with the bow? Set bread and water before them, that they may eat and drink, and go to their master. And he prepared a great provision for them. And when they had eaten and drank, he said to, he he sent them away, 
and they went to their masters. So the bands of Syria came no more into the land of Israel. And it came to pass after this that uh, Benadad, king of Syria, gathered all his hosts and went up and besieged Samaria. And there was a great famine in Samaria. And behold, they besieged it until an ass's head was sold for fourscore pieces of silver and the fourth part of a cab of dove's dung for five pieces of silver. And as the king of Israel was passing by upon the wall, there cried a woman unto him, saying, Help my lord, O king. And he said, If the Lord do not help thee, when shall I help thee out of the barn floor or out of the wine press? And the king said unto her, What aileth thee? And she answered, This woman said unto me, Give thy son that we may eat him today, and we will eat my son tomorrow. So we boiled my son and did eat him. And I said unto her on the next day, give thy son that we may eat him. And she had hit her son. So she got duped, man. Okay. She, she went ahead and, you know, boiled her son and she got duped at the, at the end of the day, man. Okay. And these are the times that we're coming in, man. This is going to be some crucial decisions <laughs> that's, that a lot of people out here is going to be facing, man. Okay. I see now, I believe, I think it was uh in Manhattan. I believe I may be mistaken where they were um cooking um uh what was it? I think rats, man. Okay, people are gonna be eating rats out here, man, just like them hamites over there be eating bush meat, man. You know, with meaning whatever they catch in the bush, they eat, man. Okay, people are gonna be eating all types of rats, you know, all types of fowls that they can catch. You know, whatever they can catch, man. Groundhogs, right? Skunks, you know, whatever. All, all types of, of, of um, abominable meat, man. You know, these people are going to be eating, man. Right? And it says here, people was eating uh, dove shit, man. Okay? People was eating dove doo-doo, man, out here, man. Making, making doo-doo cakes, you know? And that's what's going to be coming out here uh, soon come, man, when there's no food, man. When there's no food, why? Because Esau is going to store it all up for themselves, man. Up in them bunkers, man. You know, wherever they may be. You know, this is so. This is a, a evil plot by Esau. Of course, the Heavenly Father has put it in his mind to do so. Okay, so Esau, so the walls are closing in, man. The walls, are, if they're putting out, if they're putting out um, articles like this, you know, if they're putting out articles like this then the walls are closing in man the walls are definitely closing in okay this is not the time to be out here partying and celebrating fucking christmas exchanging gifts and being in a holly jolly spirit man okay and all of you that are celebrating this wicked ass holiday y'all ultimately gonna be put to death man okay because y'all not watching okay y'all doing things that the heavenly father is not pleased with man at the end of the day, man. Let me just see if I can see or find that um that article real quick, man. Cuz I believe I had it right here. Salakia. I didn't even mean to go to this, but you know, I could have swore Yeah, man. Look. Look at this here. It says, "Are they eating rotisserie rats in New York City?" You see that? You see them big ass rats? Those look like uh, tea, teacup Yorkies, man. <laughs> Them big ass city rats, man. You know? But they're doing this on the streets of New York, man. This is going to be a norm soon because of the lack of food, man. The lack of bread, man. You know? This time is, is definitely coming, man. Let me get, uh, let me get Micah real quick, man. Micah 3 and 3, 1 through 4. And it says, And I said, Here I pray you, O heads of Jacob, and ye princes of the house of Israel, it is not for you to know judgment, who hate the good and love the evil, who pluck off their skin from off them, and their flesh from off their bones, who also eat the flesh of my people and flay their skin from off of them, and they break their bones and chop them in pieces as for the pot and as flesh within the cauldron. Then shall they cry unto the Lord, but he shall not hear them. He will even hide his face from them at that time, 
as they have behaved themselves ill in their doings, right? And I was just talking about that, man. These people out here celebrating uh, this Christmas shit and New Year's next week. The Heavenly Father's not going to be hearing your cries and your sighs, okay? When you being uh, chopped up, man, okay? And being prepared as a meal for people to eat, man. You know, these days is coming, man. We coming into the time of lawlessness, man. It's going to be all out chaos out here, man. And a lot of these things are going to be going down that I'm reading to you in these scriptures, man. You know, a lot of people are going to die like this, man. You know? This is, we in a serious time. We in a beautiful time. But we in a serious time right now, man. And all these, these things are going to pop off whether you like it or not. Whether you want to believe it or not, man, it's coming, man. It's definitely coming, man. And I hope that me and other brothers, you know, the apostles on down, you know, because I put myself on the lowest, not on the highest. But the apostles on down, you know, I hope that you're listening to what, to the message that's being relayed to you, man. Okay? Because time is running short, man. Okay? And patience with the Lord is running thin. Y'all better get it together, man. Let me get second address. 15 and 57. Yeah, because Esau, y'all going to be going through it too, man. It says, Thy children shall die of hunger, and thou shalt fall through the, through the sword. Thy cities shall be broken down, and all thine shall perish with the sword in the field. They that be in the mountains shall die of hunger, and eat their own flesh, and drink their own blood for very hunger of bread and thirst of water, man. Okay, so even you Edomites, you, you, uh, you you uh, high end uh, preppers, man. You doomsday preppers. You know, prepping up all that food and all that, man. That food ain't gonna save you. Okay, ultimately it's going to run out. Okay, and you're gonna be doing. You're gonna be eating your own flesh, man. Like I was talking about earlier. You're gonna cut off an arm. You're gonna cut off a leg. Okay. You're gonna be eating your own self, man. You know, just like you know how to you know the bacteria you know, eats the body after the body dies, man. But you're going to be doing it while you're living, man. And you're going to need something to wash that leg or arm down with. What you going to wash it down with? You're going to be washing that down with your own blood, man. Okay? These things are coming on the earth, man, and they sound very harsh. Okay? They sound harsh, but it's true, man. You know, through the fear of the Lord and knowing the fear of the Lord, we persuade men, man. That's what we're supposed to do. These things don't persuade you. I don't know what will, but I guarantee you these things are coming to the earth because the Heavenly Father said they are coming to the earth. So they are coming back to the earth, man. So I suggest you prepare yourself, you know, for these things that are coming. And I'm definitely not talking about brothers in the fold. You know, I'm talking to you newcomers, man, that's just coming into the faith, man. Know what you're getting yourself involved in, man. Okay? Because it could cost you your life at the end of the day, man. You know? I got one more for you, okay, because this speaks of, and I think I, I went into this in another lesson, man. It speaks about how Esau and, and Moab, you know, collabed together to uh, do the same thing to uh, the Israelites, you know, as far as them not having any water to drink, man. Tried to thirst them to death, man. You know, these things are not new, man. These things have been happening to us throughout history, and it's about to happen again, man. You know, you know, uh, Jake loved to eat, man. You know, it's um, man, it's gonna get so bad out here, man. Like it really is, man. Like, what is that? Uh, uh, let me start at start at four. Yeah, I'm starting four. And Lord willing, this lesson is edifying. And it says, now the children of Israel, when they saw the multitude of them, were greatly troubled and said, everyone to his neighbor, now will these men look up the lick up the face of the earth for neither the high mountains nor the valleys nor the hills are able to bear their weight then every man took up his weapons of war and when they had kindled fires upon their towers they remained and watched all that night but in the second day holo furnace brought forth all his horsemen in the sight of children or of the children of israel which were in bethulia and viewed the passages up to the city and came to the fountains of their waters and took them and set garrisons of men of war over them, and he himself removed toward his people, right? 
So they took off, they cut off their water supply, man. And it says, then came unto him all the chief of, ch of the children of Esau and all the governors of the people of Moab and the captains of the sea coast and said, let our Lord now hear a word that there be not an overthrow in thine army for this people of the children of Israel do not trust in their spears, but in the height of the mountains wherein they dwell, because it is not easy to come up to the tops of their mountains. Now, therefore, my Lord, fight not against them in battle array, and there shall not so much as one man of thy people perish. Right? So they saying, nah, don't climb up there. Don't, don't, don't even deal with that, man. We got something else in mind. Remain in thy camp, and I will keep all the men of thine army, and let thy servants get into their hands the fountain of water, which issueth forth of the foot of the mountain. For all the inhabitants of Bethulia have their waters thence, so shall thirst kill them, and they shall give up their city, and we and our people shall go up to the tops of the mountains that are near, and it will camp upon them to watch that none go out of the city." So they and their wives and their children shall be consumed with fire, and before the sword come against them, they shall be overthrown in the streets where they dwell, man. Okay, so they basically say, Yo, we're not going to, you know, they're going to be thirsty, man. We're going to thirst them out, man. Okay, and if they don't come out, then they're going to die of thirst. And this is something that Esau and Moab came together to do, man. Okay, and we're going to get y'all motherfuckers back in the kingdom, man. You better hope that we give you something to eat, man. Okay? You better hope we give you something to eat, man. You know, all these things that you did to us, we know that the Heavenly Father put it in your mind and your spirits to do so. Okay? But payback is coming for you, man. Payback is definitely coming, man. Okay? And it's going to be 144,000 times harder than what you did to us, man. We're going to create new ways to make you suffer, man. And this is the last time you're ever going to get a chance to do this as far as trying to starve people out, man. So make it good, man. Okay? Give it all your best, man. And stop bullshitting, man. Bring on this sea hit, man. Okay? So we get the fuck out of here. So lock you for my, for my language, man. You know, but just reading these stories pisses me the hell off, man. Even though at the end of the day, we deserved it. So I can't be too mad. You know? But y'all going to get y'all's in the kingdom. Best believe that, man. You know, so, you know, I just want to go through a couple of, you know, illustrations of how, you know, these Edomites, you know, combat, compassed us and, 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 and starved us out, you know, had us eating our own children, our own, you know. So uh, this time is coming back, man. This time is definitely coming back, man. Stay prayed up, you know, pray to the Heavenly Father for more faith. You know, always pray, man. Always keep the Heavenly Father in mind, man. You know, study, read, watch the, watch the shows that brothers put up. It's a uh, daily edification, man. Okay? And, uh, you know, just uh, keep hold of your faith, man. You know, because these, these times is coming, man. You're going to have to have faith in the Heavenly Father to get through these times. And pray that the Heavenly Father is with you when these times come. It's Brother Aviyah, Shalom.